everyone, and welcome to the round glass review for the Carl Zeiss Jenna 50mm F4 Flectagon for Bronica? What? No, that can't be right. That's right. This lens was made by Carl Zeiss in Jenna. It is the Flectagon that you may know from the P6 medium format cameras. For this specific lens, it was made between 1970 and 1975 based on the serial number, though this model lens first appeared in 1960, and if the optical formula changed from that release date until this lens's manufacture, I could find no evidence of that online. Typical lens uses for a 50mm lens on 6x6 include landscape work and some general photography. As a Bronica lens, this has a fantastic close focus point. Also, being a 50mm lens with a relatively normal looking perspective, this lens has some portrait potential if you want to capture the scene around your subject. For your bottom line up front, this lens should not exist. When I emailed Zeiss about it, they ignored my inquiry. Two or three times I tried to make myself annoying and it didn't work. I suspect that this lens started life as a P6 lens and that it was converted to Bronica at some point. Rumors of an East German machinist who converted P6 lenses to Bronica are in places online, including testimonies from people who used his service in the 1980s. The other possibility, of course, is that this was a prototype, but I doubt that strongly. Either way, nothing about this lens's mount origin would affect the performance, and if you have this lens in P6, you should expect similar or identical performance to the images in this video. The focal length and AOV are 50 millimeters and 77 degrees on 6x6, making it approximately equivalent to a 27 millimeter lens in full frame terms. But the different aspect ratio makes this lens feel a bit wider since the square image format has more foreground and background than a landscape oriented full frame photo. The aperture range is 4 to 22, element and group count are 7 and 4, design type is retro focus. Filter size, 86 millimeters. Closest focus is 0.5 meters on P6, and edging that out a hair, 0.3 meters on Bronica. The drive is manual focus only. The native mount was Practice 6, which I've been calling P6. The dimensions are 90 millimeters by 90 millimeters, and in P6 mount, this lens weighs 480 grams. My first and top tip is that you should not use high contrast films with this lens and all the films you use should be developed for lower contrast. This is a contrasty lens in strong light, such as full sun, and you need to either control your development or your light very well when you use this lens. On the latter point, this lens delivers the best results under overcast skies or in foggy conditions when you use it outdoors. My next tip is not to bother with this lens on full frame. Use this lens on 120 film, the image circle is so large that if you use an adapter on your digital camera, you are likely to get a lot of adapter flare from extraneous light bouncing off the adapter walls and reaching your sensor in a diffuse glow that will sap sharpness and contrast. Also, even though this lens has great sharpness on 6x6, I do not expect that would hold up well on modern digital sensors. For me, this lens was best when used at the closest or near closest focus point with a large aperture for subject isolation. This lens really isolates close-up subjects well on 6x6, and that's a really a good place to use it. This is a great lens for landscape work on 6x6. That was one of my favorite uses for it, honestly. This lens does a great job of rendering tones and colors that complement landscape subjects well. And lastly, this lens has some usability as a close crop interior architecture lens and renders architectural scenes with insofar as I can tell, no distortion of any note. This is a pretty standard retrofocus design from the late 50s. This lens pairs a large airspace up front with correcting elements and back to create very good images. If you've watched this series, you'll know that the most reviewed lens design type so far, and probably always will be the case, is the retrofocus. We've seen a lot of retrofocus lens sample images in this series, and to my eye, this lens is one of the two or three best across the entire series so far. Given that the others I'd compare it to are the IRIX 15mm and IRIX 11mm, both of which are about 60 years younger in terms of design, 
Well, that is and should be heard as very high praise for the Zeiss engineer's work. The sharpness surprised me. I honestly expected, given this lens's age, that it would perform in a ho-hum manner, but this lens renders mountain ridge lines, tree leaves, building exterior details, and so forth, with a level of detail that leaves me wanting nothing. Build quality is, in keeping with lenses of its age, market, and price, exceptional. Contrast is strong. In full sun, contrast is a bit overpowering. As noted in the tip section, either control your light or your development when using this lens on film. Out-of-focus areas are surprisingly pleasant for a retrofocus lens. This lens does not deliver out-of-focus areas with the pleasantness of a well-engineered double gauze, but by wide-angle standards, the blurry areas blend into images and scenes in a lovely manner. If I've used a retrofocus lens that has a better out-of-focus area rendering, I cannot think of it as I write this script. Flare is strong when it manifests, and I recommend a wide-angle lens hood with this lens. I used one almost exclusively because flare with this lens will ruin your shots. This lens creates flare that will be hard to use in a creative manner. Ghosting is well controlled, and I had to really try to get anything in that regard. Balance with cameras is suitable on medium format. This is a front-heavy lens, but with a heavy camera behind it, you really won't notice. I bought this lens on a whim, and I'm glad I did. I still kind of remember the day I talked to an acquaintance on the phone, and he said, Hey, I just bought out an old camera store, and this dude had a back room of new old stock inventory he had forgotten about. Do you want to talk Bronica lenses? This and the next video in the series both came from that phone call. This lens is an oddball because it should not exist in Bronica Mount. I believe that this lens was not a prototype, as may be speculated by some. I believe, based on the lens mounting hardware and build, that this lens was adapted by a highly gifted machinist. Reports I've read online about this lens, the Biometer 120 in P6 and the Sonar 180 F2.8 in P6 being converted in a very limited quantity in the early 1980s by a gifted machinist, jive with that. The P6 180mm F2.8 Sonar in my Pranica case and its slightly different mount build also support that theory. This lens speaks to the talents of lens designers who, as of this video's recording, about 66 years ago designed a lens that still holds up today when used on the format for which it was intended. This lens has very few flaws, the chief one being a slight, slight overcorrection of spherical aberration that leads to a faint bright perimeter on the out-of-focus area point source lights. This is, from a technical perspective, a performance that would be enviable on a modern lens. So for those of you looking for a standard wide lens for your P6 camera, this is one that is relatively common and worth using. The image character and quality will be good, and if you don't crop your images, or crop them very little, this lens will leave you wanting for little to nothing in the way it renders negatives that are highly suitable for either digital conversion or darkroom printing. 